Uh, we have started to discuss currency derivatives in our previous class. You all are familiar with currency derivatives and how we explain derivatives. We have used only one example uh, in our previous class. I'm just repeating a little bit. Uh, is that if uh, you, you are the person uh, that involves an important export business and you have a, another party that is HSBC Bank. I said when you sign a contract to buy $1 million at the rate of Taka 80 per dollar and uh, uh, the contract will be matured in 60 days. So we say you have a contract X and HSVC, two parties are there, and both parties agreed to buy $1 million or agreed to sell $1 million at the rate of Taka 80 per dollar uh, for 60 days. So we have got a contract and we say this contract is an asset. This contract is an asset. Why? The value of this contract may increase or decrease with the changes of exchange rate in the market. So why this is called derivative or currency derivatives? Because the value of an asset derived from the values of currencies. So when the exchange rate increases, the contract value increases. When the exchange rate decreases, contract value decreases. Now we have different derivatives. We have forward, we have features, we have options, we have swap. And the first one is forward derivative or forward contract. And again, we use the example here that X and HSVC bank. So both parties agreed to buy same example, $1 million at the rate of Taka 80 per dollar uh, for 60 days. That is the delivery will happen after 60 days. Now you will find here a forward contract is an agreement between a firm and a commercial bank. So a firm and a commercial bank to exchange a specified amount of a currency, that is $1 million at a specific exchange rate, that is Taka 80 per dollar on a, a specified date, 60 days. So now we can say this is a forward contract and the contract happened in a market that is called forward market. And the exchange rate onward, both parties agree, that is called forward rate. We have also uh, learned about the calculation of forward premium and forward discount. Uh, we know that the exchange rate may increase or decrease based on so many environmental factors. What are the environmental factors? You know, the political decision of the government economic factors, social factors, technological factors, legal factors, and other environmental factors. So when we consider all these factors, uh, considering this, you may uh, learn about forecasting from other uh, uh, subjects, from statistics and from other finance related subjects where we can forecast whether the exchange rate will increase or decrease. If it is increased, that means there is a forward premium and if it decreases, then there is a forward uh, discount. How can we calculate it? So you see that F forward exchange rate equals to S a spot exchange rate into one plus premium or discount. We have an example. You are given a, a spot rate of $1.681 per pound. 90 day forward rate is given dollar 1.677 per pound. You can calculate forward premium or discount by using this formula, uh, forward exchange rate minus spot exchange rate divided by spot exchange rate into 360 divided by N. N means for how many days the contract is for. So it is for 90 days. So put the old values. You have future value 1.677 spot 1.681 divided by 1.681 into 360 divided by 90. You have minus 0.95%. That is, you have a forward discount based on all the environmental factors. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, found that uh, there will have a, a decrease of the discount rate. 
And we also uh, covered about, uh, we also discussed uh, about swap. And we say that uh, swap is happen in a reverse mode. That means if you buy a spot and sell forward, that is a swap. Or you have currency now and you have information, you have focused it. You, are, you have a very good forecast that in future, the exchange rate might decrease. So what you can do, what currency you have, you can sell a spot. And same time, you can sign a forward contract to buy in future the same currency. So this is called swap. Buy a spot, sell forward, or sell a spot, buy forward. But you must uh, go for uh, these transactions uh, on the same time. It's like that involves a spot transaction along with a corresponding forward contract. So you buy now and you know that you have this currency. So you sign another contract to sell now, though deliver will happen in future. Again, you have currency you are selling now, uh, but same time you need the currency uh, after 60 days. So you sign a contract today to buy same currency after 60 days. That is called along with a corresponding forward contract that will reverse the spot transaction. And also in our previous uh, uh, discussion, we talk about a non-deliverable forward contract. And we use the example that year, uh, especially what happened, does not result in an actual exchange of currencies. Actual exchange of currencies, uh, 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 that is not happening. But there is a tricky calculation. What I have, we have already explained in our previous example. I'm using the same example here. You will see that two parties agreed on NDF. So what's the name of this? Two parties agreed on NDF. What does it mean? Uh, they agreed on this exchange rate, but actual delivery will not happen. You know that again. So what happened? The difference uh, will be uh, shared. The difference will be uh, 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 divided uh, among both. So if the exchange rate is based on uh, this exchange rate and in the market exchange rate is 0 0.0023. So if the difference is there, the difference will be paid to the uh, uh, seller. So this way uh, it happened. So what's the currency future contact? In, uh, we, we use the same example, but you will find a, a, a good differences here uh, because uh, you know that forward contract, uh, that is not a standard uh, contract, that is not organized contract, but future contract is organized and a standard contract. So same example when a, a company signs a contract with HSBC Bank, HSBC Bank to buy $1 million at the rate of Taka 80 per dollar for 60 days. Uh, it, it will be a future contract if this transaction occurred through future market, through organized market. Now, what is the difference between organized market and forward? Organized market is like our stock exchange. You can't buy a stock without CSC and DSC. So this way you can't buy or sell uh, futures without futures market. There are many futures market all over the world called Chicago, uh, Mercantile, uh, London Exchange, Singapore Exchange, uh, uh, Indian Commodities Exchange. So th th there are uh, various uh, futures market available in this world. Uh, we don't have future market in Bangladesh. We don't have any organized future market in Bangladesh, but Singapore has, uh, India has, India has commodities exchange, uh, very organized commodity future market. Now, uh, we will elaborate the differences. Now, you will find a clear difference between forward market and uh, future market. Uh, very clear difference. How? Because you have all the sub point here and here the explanation about forward markets and future markets. So now first one, contract size. In case of forward markets, contract size is customized. Why customized? Because it is not organized market. It is not a standard market. No specific rules and regulations are here. Even no governing authority is here. 
So it depends on two parties, X and HSVC. So two parties, it's customized. But when we talk about future markets, you have to follow the rules and regulations of the future market. It is organized market. They have a standard. You have to satisfy their standard. And that's why contract size will be standardized. If you want, you can't buy $1,000. You can buy $10,000. So they have standard that minimum, how much you have to buy or you have to sell. That's why contract size is customized when we talk about forward market. But when we talk about future market, uh, this is standardized. Now the second point, delivery date. Again, this is customized. Why customized? Because it depends on, again, agreement between two parties. But when we are the part of future market, then this is standardized because the market has its own time frame. Whether the contract will be for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days or 120 days, normally it's like 30, then 90, uh, then 180 days. So these uh, uh, time frame we have observed in various future market. Who are the participants? Yes, in the forward market, we have seen banks. There are also brokers uh, like uh, Shonali Exchange, Rupali Exchange, uh, various exchange house uh, allowed permitted exchange house are the participants. Multinational companies, those are involved in for, uh, uh, buying and selling, uh, involved in remitting their profit. Uh, but remember, public speculation not encouraged here. That means this market is not encouraging that you can make money through a speculation. Uh, this is not encouraged. The market don't want to see that uh, you will involve in gambling, you will involve in a speculation. In future, dollar rate may increase. So you will buy many dollars, much dollars you can to sell in the future to make high profit. This kind of X speculation uh, is not encouraged here. But in case of future markets, this is organized market. This is standard market. You need to follow their rules and regulations. This is uh, forward market is risky, but here less risk you have because at least uh, you are safe uh, under some rules and regulations. So all the same here, banks, brokers, multinational companies, but Qualified public speculation is encouraged here. Why encouraged here? Because you have enough information. You have brokers, you have rules and regulations, you have market, that is you can find, you have flow, you have office of the market. So these way speculation is encouraged. You can involve in trade, you can involve in uh, a buy or sell activities, through a speculation. You know that in future, a uh, fuel price may increase. So you can buy fuel from commodities market. You know that the pound uh, exchange rate between pound and taka, the pound will appreciate. So you can buy pound from the market so that when the pound will appreciate, you can sell and make money. Uh, what about the security deposit? Uh, in case of forward market, compensating bank balance or credit lines needed. What does it mean, compensating bank balance or credit lines needed? Uh, you will find that when you want to buy dollar from HSBC bank, uh, so you will get delivery after 60 days. HSBC bank may ask a minimum security deposit. Uh, they may ask you because you uh, want to buy $1 million, $1 million in a future rate, uh, they can have a minimum balance requirement that you always must keep $20,000 in your account. <coughs> so these kind of uh, compensating <coughs> bank balances for credit lines needed. But in, in case of future markets, uh, it's like CSC, DSC. Uh, so a small security deposit is enough.
Why smooth security deposit is enough? Because you are following many rules and regulations. You have papers, you have documents, uh, your transactions are guaranteed by uh, future markets rules and regulations. Uh, you are uh, mostly safe here. Uh, uh, but in case of uh, forward, uh, really it depends on two parties agreement. So that case is uh, security is vulnerable. Uh, sometimes uh, any party can break uh, the contract. So it's risky and that's why a compensating bank balance for credit lines needed. And then clearing operation and, and uh, clearing operation, how the uh, clearing happened. Uh, we know that uh, in a stock market also, there is a clearing operation uh, that we buy and sell using our website, but how it, it is settled, obviously using clearing uh, section. Uh, every day we transact through check and banks also go to their clearing house to clear their transactions. So these way in the forward market, how clearing uh, operation occurred or happened. Uh, it's basically handled by individual banks and brokers. So you see that individual banks and brokers, they uh, do clearing operation. But in case of futures market, they have a standard, they're organized, they have rules and regulations. So obviously uh, there is existence of regulatory bodies. So handled by exchange clearing house. You see that there is a clearing house handled by exchange clearing house and daily settlements to market price. What does it mean? If the dollar price increases, your contract size will increase. If dollar price decreases, your contract size will decreases, decrease. So every day uh, you are settling your market price. Every day your statement is changing. Uh, when you sign a contract to get dollar in, in 90 days, so Throughout 90 days, every day your contract size will change. This is called daily settlements to market price. More differences. Uh, here, what about the marketplace? In case of forward market, this is worldwide. Through telephone network. So worldwide telephone network, uh, you can use to buy or sell. In case of future markets, you have office, you have floor, uh, you have market. So that's why you have a central exchange flow. And in, in case of forward market, you don't have any central exchange flow. But when we talk about futures market, you have central exchange flow with worldwide communication, with worldwide communication. What about regulation? This is self-regulating. So what, what it means? Self-regulating means, again, two parties are regulating this. The participants are regula regulating this. Uh, parties who are involved in the contract, uh, the rules and regulations uh, uh, on what they agreed, these are their regulation. These are their rules. But here you have Commodity Future Trading Commission, National Futures Association, in different countries, different organizations uh, are designing and developing regulation. Uh, you know, uh, for regulating CSC and DSC, Chitong Stock Exchange and Dhaka Stock Exchange, we have a regulatory body. Uh, what's the name of the regulatory body? The Security Exchange Commission. Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission. So like this here. And then how liquidation happened. So mostly settled by actual delivery liquidation, how we reach to the uh, end of the contract, uh, mostly settled by actual delivery. One party uh, received delivery and one party provided delivery. But in case of future market, you have option because it's an organized market, a standard market like share. You can sell and buy every day. The contract you have signed today, you can sell it today, you can sell it tomorrow. Uh, you can buy it again. You can buy other contract as well. So mostly settled by offset. Mostly you buy, you involve in buy and sell. Uh, actual delivery happened uh, uh, suddenly. Uh, it, it's not regular versus actual delivery is happening. So mostly settled by offset. Offset means you buy and sell. You are not waiting till delivery. Uh, you are not waiting 90 days to get $1 million. If you have profit today, you want to make some profit, so you want to sell it today. Is there any transaction cost? 
What's the transaction cost? The transaction cost is banks bid and ask spread. Bank always buy cheaper with a cheaper rate and bank sell with a higher rate. And that is banks spread. And that is their transaction, our transaction cost. And here, obviously broker is fish. You know that when we go to the stock market, if you buy, you need to pay brokerage fees. If you sell, you need to pay brokerage fees. In the future market, uh, the pattern is same. You have to pay uh, uh, brokerage fees. Uh, either you buy or either you sell. Now we will uh, check two different examples related to futures market. So uh, very at, be very attentive because the example is simple, uh, but since these terminologies are different, that's why uh, sometimes uh, we be confused. But otherwise, example is not that much difficult. Okay, first see uh, what information we have. So we have information about as speculators. As speculators often sell currency futures when they expect the underlying currency to depreciate or vice versa. That is very simple. When you go for sell, sell currency, when you go for sell, when you think that in future you may have loss if you don't sell now, or when you buy, again, if you don't buy now, you can't make money in future. So under both situation, you have two different strategies and that's why it's called vice versa. So sometimes you have to sell, sometimes you have to buy. So in this situation, we see what happened. April 4, contract to sell, so it is sell contract. You are selling 500,000 peso at the rate of 0 0.09 per peso. That is $45,000 on June 17. So you are going to sell 500,000 peso. And when you will deliver it? June 17. Now you see that. You have signed a contract to sell peso. It's April 4. So what is your job? You have to collect 500,000 peso by this time because June 17 is your delivery date. It means not that you have to buy now. It means not that you must have a, a stock of 500,000 peso today you have enough time to have 500,000 peso. Within this time, if you can accumulate 500,000 peso, you can deliver on June 17. Now, June 17, what you did, you buy 500,000 peso at the rate of 0 0.08 per peso. Because you had a forecast why you sign this sell contract? Because you have a forecast that in future, the currency will depreciate. So you can buy same currency with lower rate. Today, you need to pay $0.09 per peso. You have a forecast that in future, you can buy same peso with a cheaper price, less than $0.09. And your forecast has become right. When June 17, your forecast is working. The exchange rate really depreciate. You can buy same peso with a cheaper price at the rate of $0.08. So now you see that you can buy 500,000 peso paying only dollar 40,000. So, but this time, what was the situation? 
you need dollar forty five thousand dollar if you want to buy on that day but you have signed the contract to sell sell at what dollar forty five thousand and you bought at what dollar forty thousand so how much profit you have now anybody can answer sir five thousand five thousand so simple you see but ultimate why you have made the profit is because of forecast. So finance people, global finance people, your success is really depend on forecast. And who can forecast? Who have never studied this? Who are not regular in the class? Who have no text? Who never read newspapers? Do you think they can forecast rightly? Or who are regular in the newspaper? Who study hard? They can focus rightly. Who can focus? People who are aware and do a lot of research and study. Yes, you need a lot of research and a study. It's not from the sky, but the calculation is so simple. Now, we can make a reverse situation or we can uh, use another example. Where currency will appreciate. So we have second example here. What's the situation? We say uh, it's an it's an appreciate, or uh, you have an information that uh, multinational companies may purchase currency futures to hedge their foreign currency payables, or sell currency futures to hedge their receivables. So you are expecting just here, you are expecting from your international business to receive 500,000 peso when June 17, when you are expecting this on June 17. So you are a businessman, you are an international business person, you are expecting to have 500,000 peso. Why you are expecting? Maybe you have already exported some goods and you will receive payment. Yeah? Your, your expectation to receive, what does it mean? You will receive payment. When you will receive payment? June 17. So June 17 and April 4, how many months differences? Near about three months. So when you will get 500,000 peso, you are American businessman, you need dollar. And three months later, what will be the exchange rate of peso and dollar? You don't know exactly. And you have a focus that the peso will depreciate. And if peso depreciate, then you will be loser. So what do you want to do? You want to fix the price today. You want to fix the dollar price today. You want to fix it. You want to lock the exchange rate today. And that's why what you did. You know that after three months, you will have 500,000 peso from your business. So you want to sell the peso today. And that's why you sign a future contract contract to sell 500 peso at the rate of dollar 09 per peso on June 17. So you sign the contract today, you will get 0 0.09 dollar per peso on that day. So signing date is today and you will receive dollar on June 17. Now see the situation. When you receive 500,000 peso, you will sell the peso at the log price and you will get the dollar. And if the market price is now different that you have a loss, so you don't bother about the spot price because you lock the price and you get the price. And this is benefits of currency futures.